Your daughter has only maternal DNA. In seven months, you will have virgin birth. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Oh, this is brilliant story writing. Credit where it's due though, it's rooted in scientific fact. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 5, Episode 11, Joy to the World. It was recommended by Zuvi, one of our most recent channel members. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House episodes, and this will be episode 50. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Mr. Henderson is totally lame and this is our best chance to inform him of that fact. Everybody knows Mr. Henderson's a stupid We all hate bullies, but as a kid, you were either bullied, neutral, or a bully. You probably even bounced between categories depending on where you were or who you were with. I'll let you figure out what category I was after 10 year old me woke up after my head smashed into the concrete playground because I was a pizza face. Another 10 year old student had pushed me over during a soccer match. Even after the acting was gone, I was bullied for my name or the size of my nose. I hate that school for a long time, but I'm glad I experienced that because it motivated me to try and show the world who I am and what I can contribute. It made me study hard to get the grades for med school. And if it weren't for that, if I had it easy, who knows what person I would be now. This is what 20th century psychologist Alfred Adler would call teleological thinking, that we choose our own path despite what may happen to us. But not everyone responds to bullying in that way. For many, it permanently affects their self-esteem, even if the reason for the bullying in the first place disappears. It reminds me of a study published in none other than the Journal of Aggression by Tofi and colleagues in 2011 that showed being a victim of bullying is an independent risk factor for being depressed later in life. Schools have a responsibility to create positive climates, identify bullying early to help deal with the root cause. Some kids bully at school because they're bullied by their siblings at home or have overtly strict parents. It's all of our responsibilities to identify it and stamp it out where we can. Now, our girl has non-specific symptoms of vomiting and nausea. We'll need some more clues to come up with a differential because at the moment, that could be a thousand different things. A 16 year old female gets pranked, also gets visual hallucinations and vomiting. It turns out to be a failing liver. Greg made me think of you. Who got a house a present and why does he want to hide it so much? I'm intrigued. What's even more intriguing though is why a 16 year old girl would suddenly develop liver failure. Sadly, in half of the cases of acute liver failure in children, no cause is actually found, but this won't be that half. So possibilities could be metabolic, Wilson's disease or hemochromatosis, inflammatory, autoimmune conditions like primary biliary cirrhosis, autoimmune hepatitis, or primary sclerosing cholangitis. Neoplastic could be lymphoma or leukemia with liver infiltration. Infective could be hep B, C or CMV. Or very spicy causes could be toxic. Maybe she was poisoned with alcohol, paracetamol or some herbal remedies could do it as well. In cases like this, we do a liver screen, checking liver function, causes of viral hepatitis, autoimmune screen, top screen and full blood counts and then take it from there. Wow, Manual of the Operations of Surgery by Joseph Bell. Handwriting's kind of girly, you got an admirer house? I said forget the book. What did you do to Natalie? We gave her some shrooms. They're in Simon's locker. Wow, now you know what choir practice really means, unless it's in the Roman Catholic Church. The team mentioned the reason why she's being bullied is because she's an overachiever, getting high grades and she volunteers. 
Now we know she's been given shrooms of which the main ingredient is the prodrug psilocybin. In the body it's converted to psilocin which is highly psychoactive. It's still not fully understood how people have the subjective hallucinogenic experiences because of psilocin but it's thought to be at least part of the effect through a subtype of serotonin receptor called the 5-HT2A receptor. Interestingly though it's a fairly safe drug and it's thought to not be addictive so if those mushrooms did produce her liver failure maybe they weren't as magic as they expected although a death cap is a poisonous mushroom and that sounds very much like a wizard's hat actually the death cap which is called Amanita phylloides is the most poisonous mushroom in the world. So what if Simon got his magic mushrooms mixed up with his poisonous mushrooms? He could have given her a toxin called alpha aminitin if it was a death cap. Just half a cap's worth is enough to kill an adult and it persists even through cooking. It can cause kidney and liver failure just 6 to 24 hours after ingestion and a vomiting, abdominal pain followed by jaundice, seizure, coma and eventually death. Some dyes used in radiology have blocked the effects experimentally but there's no known antidote for humans if she was poisoned with this. Oh, maybe it wasn't those kids who poisoned Natalie. Maybe it was Natalie herself. I didn't try to kill myself. Then why'd you have all those painkillers? In case I get a headache. Let's just make you better. What's the point? Ah, the kids at school took pictures of her and then published them on a website calling her names. That is horrible. It reminds me of a huge uproar recently on something called revenge porn where illicit pictures of someone are shared online without a person's consent. There was a famous case a few years back of a YouTuber called Chrissy Chambers whose ex-partner filmed intimate moments between them and after their breakup published those online. Maybe that's why the patient's so upset here. Maybe something similar could have happened to her. Back in Chrissy's case, the high court ruled in her favor and allowed her to take the videos down. Now the act of uploading someone's intimate pictures online without their permission is prosecuted under sexual abuse laws and anyone breaking those laws can be sentenced to jail time and rightly so because the psychological impact something like this has on victims is profound and what this shows me is that even though the internet can be a place for incredible good that power to distribute things immediately needs to be used with caution since it can be a double-edged sword just the happiest sweetest little girl and a year ago she hits puberty and it's like this secretive little stranger moved into her room ep 180 over 110 crackling three quarters of the way up Oh, so sounds like there's been some personality change at the turn of puberty and she may be going into kidney failure now as well. I guess that from the crackles on the chest, which could indicate excess fluid and also the high blood pressure. You see, the kidneys are extremely important in blood pressure maintenance because of something called the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone hormone axis. Aldosterone controls how much fluid and potassium we retain and angiotensin 2 causes retention of the water, sodium and vasoconstriction increasing blood pressure. When the kidneys start getting damaged, they lose the ability to regulate the blood pressure accurately, which can cause even more damage to the kidneys in a vicious cycle. If it's not related to the mushrooms, then it could be related to a brain tumor causing SIADH as well. That could cause the personality change and retention of water, leading to the high blood pressure and crackles in the lungs. That wouldn't necessarily cause liver failure though, unless the cancer had somehow spread to the liver, which is basically impossible. So let's get more clues. You had my present for a year and didn't even open it? I heard you left the trial. It was that doctor. Dr. Foreman. I told him those injections were making me sick in my stomach and he told me, get over it. Oh, that is not good feedback, Foreman. 13 has the hots for Foreman as well as he's trying to help her in this drug trial for her Huntington's disease 
which is a movement disorder that can cause rapid uncontrollable movements as you saw here with our patient. 13 has it, but it's in the early stages and she's desperately scared of it progressing. Now what Foreman said here was inexcusable, but I wish that was the worst thing that doctors have said to patients. One of my patients just this week told me as they were leaving, thank you for being so nice. We've seen a few doctors recently who were total jerks to us. And there's video proof of how those interactions can go sometimes and how some doctors Doctors think it's okay to behave such as the one from El Camino Hospital in the US. The patient felt like he couldn't breathe and the doctor was joking about it. I just tried to inhale and I even told her I could not inhale. <laughs> he, he can't inhale, wow, he must be dead. Are you dead sir? If as a doctor you get to the point where you feel it's okay to say that to a patient, you need time off. Take a break, sit down, reflect on who you've become and why you went into medicine in the first place. I'm sure it wasn't to make fun of patients who have made themselves vulnerable by seeking your support and guidance as a professional. I know the job is stressful. I know things can get repetitive. I know sometimes people go to the emergency department which what may seem like trivial conditions to us, but patients are not doctors. If they feel like they're dying, then that's emergency enough to see us. If they were all doctors, then why would anyone even need us? Let's take a step back and not blame patients for understaffing, poor working conditions or chronic mismanagement. There are so many toxic cultures in healthcare. I remember when I first decided to do family medicine an anesthetist said to me, that's a woman's career. Do a real specialty, then went on to say that Oh, it's just banter. Maybe his jokes would be better if his usual audience weren't asleep. Ow. Oh! Okay, question for you smart people. What specialty doctor has the highest risk of a complaint? Answers down below. I have a terrible headache in the back of my head here. Uh-huh, it's Beccaria's sign. I'll be gone by your third trimester. Oh, God. You didn't know you were pregnant? You know that just from the headache? Well, House is flexing his eponymous sign knowledge there. Beccaria sign is a painful pulsation in the back of the head, occasionally seen in pregnant women. So I wouldn't go ahead and plan the baby shower from that information just yet. A severe headache to the back of the head could also be a thunderclap headache and it represents something called a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which can be fatal. Sometimes people describe it as I thought I was hit in the back of the head with a baseball bat, but when I turned around, there was no one there. Well, you either have a thunderclap headache or you were hit with a baseball bat held by John Cena. Now, you can't see me, yeah. my time is now. I know because of the tight shirt stretched over the swollen boobs, like the motion sickness patch that doesn't do anything for the kind of sickness that you feel in the morning. I'm a virgin, says my fiance. What? If House sees one more pregnant patient that hasn't had sex, he needs to swap out his Vicodin for holy water and open a monastery. Maybe humans have evolved and we can reproduce like bacteria now, where we just split and clone ourselves. I mean, we're in the era of chat GPT, so why not? Why just have one of you when there could be two, four, eight, yeah, 16? Yeah, that's as far as I'm willing to go with my two time tables for this. Yeah, aside from sexomnia and oral sex with stomach perforation, I've got zero other ideas. Unless this is a simulation and her fetus is a program glitch. Aren't there other ways I could get pregnant? Like sitting on a toilet seat? Absolutely. Oh God, Natalie, she's having a seizure. Oh, we have another clue. Interestingly, all her symptoms so far still match with being given a poisonous death cap mushroom, but that would be a bit too easy. We know she doesn't have Wilson's disease because the test was negative. I'm surprised they haven't done any head scans or blood tests yet. One of the team suggested TB, but she has no risk factors and that would cause problems with the upper lungs rather than the lower part. So that seems unlikely as well. In all fairness, lupus could cause this, hitting multiple organs at different times sequentially. Also, one symptom we haven't considered yet, which may be relevant to the title, is the depression. What if the depression isn't because of the bullying and is actually a symptom of her disease? 
then it would be related to puberty as well. What if she has hypothyroidism that caused her increased weight and the depression, but not really the lung or liver symptoms? Surely it's got to be toxic, metabolic or autoimmune. I hope they do the tests soon. Also, I couldn't help but laugh when I said there would need to be a guy sitting between you and the toilet seat. But yeah, absolutely. Severe mold allergy could cause a liver failure, respiratory arrest and encephalopathy. Give her a prick test and antifungals. Nausea isn't something you can overcome with sheer willpower. She can't handle that. She'd have to leave the trial anyway. Okay, severe mold allergy is a very spicy diagnosis by Kuttner. The timing and symptoms aren't quite characteristic, but if they were, then the patient wouldn't be here. You would expect more respiratory symptoms as that is the point of entry for the mold into the body. Patients would also have a rash, severe itch, watery eyes, and an itchy nose, which she also doesn't seem to have. I still don't think this is it. Now the parts of the brain that control and trigger depression are part of something known as the limbic system. Specifically, you have the hippocampus, which also controls memory, the amygdala, and the dorsomedial thalamus. In puberty, as sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone increase, they bind to receptors in the limbic system that can cause increased sex drive and emotional volatility. What if the problem is in those estrogen receptors? What if she has something called estrogen insensitivity syndrome? She would have no periods though, and surely they would have noticed with her being 16. They better figure it out quickly though, because her liver enzymes and clotting time indicate her liver is about to exit the building. You're not acting like house. You are like him. She says you told her you can get pregnant from sitting on a toilet seat. I said those words, but with I want a paternity test. We'll do the paternity test. Oh, the story House just told as an alternative explanation is bonkers. He said that maybe she got pregnant from a Civil War bullet that went through a soldier's scrotum and carried his ball into her reproductive tract. But he ended by saying, or oh, maybe she cheated on you. That story is definitely an urban legend, but some say it's where the phrase son of a gun came from. The claim for this bullet pregnancy came from a joke article in the American Medical Weekly in the 19th century. People then kept citing it and the fact it was a joke became lost like some kind of Chinese whispers situation. There were a few things that gave it away in the article. They said that the ball that injured the soldier and carried his testicle to the mother was also found in the infant's scrotum. But in case that didn't convince people that it was a joke, the author even printed that it was a bit of fun. Two weeks after the original article was in print, <laughs> son of a god. Did she mention she used to drink a lot? I used to get her a few bottles of vodka each week. Why'd you stop? She got her own ID. I haven't drunk in six months. A few bottles of vodka each week. Forget a virgin birth. This girl is trying to meet Jesus. Now we know she had a personality change recently. We all know that the alcohol can cause liver disease, but what if it was stopping the alcohol that caused her to get worse? What if the alcohol was treating her underlying condition? Alcoholics can get high rates of infection like certain types of pneumonia and skin infections. It does that by suppressing the immune system. What if that immunosuppression was actually beneficial, like in an autoimmune condition, for example. Now she's turned over a new leaf and become a good student, which has messed her up monumentally. Scleroderma could have caused the symptoms. It can cause liver dysfunction, kidney injury, seizure, and problems with the food pipe. An autoimmune screen would pick up anti-SCL70 antibodies. It could still also be lupus. I'm just gonna let that hang. My asthma. They said they'd fix it. Why don't you show me how your inhaler works? <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Introducing the new fragrance from Paco Rabanne, Wheezy Blue. <laughs> this reminds me of a couple that came to my clinic once, 24 year old male, 21 year old female. They've been trying for a baby for the last year and they were wondering why they couldn't conceive. They said they tried everything, timing the cycle, using natural herbs, doing different belly positions. It turns out they were trying to get pregnant 
through the belly button. Believe it or not, it's a more popular thought than you might expect. Baby is in the belly, it grows in the stomach, so it must be made from the belly button. I never knew parenting had an entrance exam. She was talking to me and she just passed out. The heart's slowing down. Can you fix it? Push one at atrophy. Wow, now her heart is slowing down. This is definitely a multi-system disease. And I'm wondering about the liver disease. If she was on alcohol, maybe we can eliminate it from the differential. If we do that, then Sjogren's syndrome could account for all her symptoms, the depression, the cardiac manifestations, the vomiting, the kidney failure, and can even cause interstitial lung disease. You'd want to do anti-rho and anti-lap antibodies anti-nuclear antibodies and treatment would be with immunosuppressants like chloroquine or methotrexate. You could also give her steroids at this point and see if she improves. Very interesting case, to be honest. Now, if you know it's never lupus, then check out my channel membership. You get priority reply to comments, early access to new videos, and being able to suggest a series and episode for me to react to. For a limited time only, the first 30 members have a chance to win a one hour, one-on-one -on -one medical tutor session with me on a topic of your choice. We currently have 21 members with only nine spots left. So make sure to join now to secure your space. The earlier you join, the earlier I can react to your suggestions. So press join now. I've been waiting here for six hours. Am I the father or not? No, but you also didn't cheat on you. Spontaneous calcium spike could prep the egg for fertilization without sperm. Parthenogenesis, baby without a daddy. What? Okay, surely that is impossible. You see, this is a fairly common practice in the invertebrate animals and plants, but has never created a healthy human baby. In theory, an egg can fuse with another egg, which can replace the requirements of a sperm, which could produce a baby. In reality, these events happen, but they create something called a molar pregnancy, which is basically a benign tumor inside the womb. It can even mutate and become a cancer called choriocarcinoma that can spread to other parts of the body and be fatal. See, some of the signs of this kind of pregnancy are excessive sickness and high levels of a hormone called HCG, which is what we use on the pee on the stick test. Treatment depends on how late it is into the pregnancy, but usually involves surgical removal of just the pregnancy. Some women, depending on the type, can have methotrexate, which will cause the womb to evacuate the tumor. Crazy stuff. Your daughter has only maternal DNA. In seven months, you will have virgin birth. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, this is brilliant story writing. But from a medical perspective, it is a total stretch. Credit where it's due, though. It's rooted in scientific fact. And it's tried hard to be theoretically justified. But the patient would have to be an ant. It has only been reported rarely in vertebrates and that was in a 2010 article in the journal titled Evolution. In that article they presented DNA they found from a night lizard that showed evidence of independent unisexual reproduction from this species in Costa Rica. So I have a question for you smart people. In an era where a monkey can play pong with their mind, Lizards can give birth by themselves and we can grow an actual kidney from stem cells. Is a virgin birth such a stretch? Answers down below. It's hitting all her organs. What's her out fast? 300. It can't be leukemia. Start her on chemo. Bone marrow biopsy to confirm. Anyone who's been on chemotherapy will tell you that something you need to do is make sure you actually need it. Cuddy was also saying that her liver is about to give up, so giving chemo is urgent. The truth is that so many drugs that are used for chemotherapy actually are processed by the liver and could even worsen her liver disease. So how did the team get to blood malignancy from ALKFOS, which stands for alkaline phosphatase? There are only really two places that this marker can be found, liver and 
the bone. It can be found in high levels in the blood if there's a gallstone causing obstruction of bile flow or there's a cancer that spread to the bone or liver, for example. That could be many different types of cancer, not just blood cancer. So that's one thing that isn't quite accurate here. Now, running with it and assuming it is blood, there is a blood cancer that primarily affects bone called multiple myeloma. We remember the signs using an acronym called CRAB. C is for hypercalcemia, R is renal failure, A is anemia, B is bone damage. That doesn't quite account for the patient's symptoms though, as they seem to be a bit more generalized. Multiple myeloma usually also affects men over 60. She doesn't quite look like the golfing type, so leukemia, Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma with bone or liver metastases could be options, but I still fancy the autoimmunes like Sjogren's or systemic sclerosis here. Also, Cuddy wants to treat and House wants to test. Seems like Cuddy is a bit traumatized from losing the baby she's going to adopt and now she's getting worried about losing another patient. It's good to be empathetic in these kinds of situations, but getting too personally involved can make you risk averse as a doctor and stop you making the right decisions. In this case, I think she would be making the right decision in real life. But of course, in this case, just nuke the patient with your strongest chemo and she'll come out looking like a member of the X-Men. I'll arrange a biopsy. Mrs. Burke, we're conducting another trial in tandem with yours. The nausea will be less. Here's the forms if you want back in. Well, Foreman has had a change of heart and all it took was for two separate people to compare him to House in one day. Foreman discussed this patient dropping out with his partner researcher and she said that participants are not people, they're numbers. He shouldn't try to get her back in because that would introduce study bias and the reason why they have hundreds of participants is to account for the situation of people falling out. Then she dropped the bombshell. The only reason why she recruited him was because he worked with House. So he should understand the patients and numbers concept. Ouch. Interestingly though, I think Foreman is nothing like House. Yes, he's diagnostically brilliant, but his sense of the rules and the law in general keeps him on the side of caution. Chase, on the other hand, is way more reckless and willing to do what he thinks is right, even if the law isn't on his side. Those who have seen Tyrant Season 6, Episode 3 know what I mean. Now, don't go posting spoilers in the comments about that. Maybe we shouldn't have overlooked autoimmunes. I said rape. Microangiopathic vasculitis. Yes. Thank you for my patient. The paternity test showed she cheated, so I faked the whole parthenogenesis thingy. It's official. House is the Saul Goodman of medicine. It's never good to hide a lie, even if it's a white lie, but some people will disagree. They argue that a white lie is innocuous. We can use them to create magical worlds for our children and be polite or well-mannered, like telling a politician they're a good person or telling someone that you'll call them later or politely laughing at an unfunny joke. Thank you. Most people that argue this would discriminate between white lies and real lies, saying that real lies are intentionally deceitful to benefit yourself. That would be something like house fabricating a virgin birth to hide a woman's infidelity or Jeff Bezos denying his rocket looking like a giant phallus. So are white lies acceptable or are all lies wrong? Why? Answers down below. It's not leukemia. Seizures, liver failure, it's eclampsia. That's a pregnancy disease. You can get eclampsia up to a month after giving birth. The baby's why you quit drinking, isn't it? Oh, no way. If I was more focused on teenage tendencies and not phallus-shaped rockets, then maybe my diagnostic skills would have lifted off. But here I am, left in the ash of a missed diagnosis. This is especially annoying as there was another case of a teenage pregnancy in another episode, so I didn't think it would come up again. Great diagnosis though, and what's even better is that none other than Cuddy cracked it, not House, so technically both me and House were equally clueless on this one, which makes me feel moderately better. 
Misery loves company. The reason why eclampsia happens is poorly understood, but it's thought to be because of the placenta and its poor blood flow due to the latter stages of pregnancy leading to ischemia and immune abnormalities. It makes sense that the reason why she stopped drinking was the pregnancy. They still need to fix her liver though, but at least if they know what the problem is, they can put her on the transplant list and give her a full refurbishment. She wasn't breathing. I tried so hard, but I couldn't do anything. If I had her in a hospital, maybe she'd be alive. Ah, that is horrible to hear about. That guy who gave her the shrooms was the father, and she wanted to hide this from everyone to the point where when she started giving birth in the school canteen, she rushed to a random empty house nearby and tried to have the baby on her own, but the baby didn't survive. She said that she just put her coat over them when they passed away and didn't even bury them. The fact that she felt that she had to keep it a secret from her parents means that she felt like she would be a disappointment to them if she went to them with this information. There's something to be said on the value of strict parenting and setting boundaries on what is and isn't acceptable. But if that isn't counterbalanced with an understanding that people mess up sometimes, then this is what can happen. Children end up feeling like them being loved is conditional. There's actually a book called Unconditional Parenting that describes how parents can and should detach their love from specific outcomes or goals a child has, that, that their love should be unconditional because the child has intrinsic value and the reason why they should act to gain a certain goal is for their own benefit, not to unlock parental love. If you're interested in knowing more about that, you can get that audiobook with a free trial of Audible Premium Plus. Link is in the description below. Can you cure this? The damage to the heart and liver are permanent. I'm gonna die. I'm sorry. She's gonna die? What? Where's the experimental treatment? Where's the double heart liver transplant? Come on, there's no way she could go like that. Also, how can she just leave a baby's body in a random abandoned house for one month without anyone finding out? It's been three weeks now since she gave birth and after just 24 hours, internal organs begin to decompose. Just three to five days after dying, bodily fluids start leaking from orifices and insects begin to congregate. That's what we call putrefaction. Just 10 to 20 days after death, then you get something called black putrefaction, which means the body gets infested with maggots. Someone would have definitely noticed. I suspect she's not telling the whole truth here. This episode is a great advert for contraception. Damn. That's not your baby. You saved her life. Now you have to let her go. It's your daughter. People found her and took care of her. Yes! Who's chopping onions again? Is that chilly in my eyes? Oh, pollen counts are really high today. Now, as beautiful as this scene is, we know this girl abandoned a living baby in the middle of an empty house in a winter. Not okay. Even if she were to live through this, then there would need to be a full scale investigation before she could look after the baby, especially since she's had signs of depression and mental health disturbances at the beginning of the episode, saying things like, what's the point in treating her? Of course, Without the whole leaving the baby in the house situation, that would be okay, but you have to take things in context. So up to 20% of women experience postnatal depression, typically lasts three to six months, and sometimes needs medication and tends to settle with time. Just this week, I saw a 29 year old single female who had triplets and was suffering from this. What some people are having to go through is unimaginable. Decent episode, seven out of 10 for entertainment, six out of 10 accuracy, and six out of 10 diagnosis. Jonathan, it's Lawrence Kuttner. Why are you here? I wanted to apologize for all the horrible stuff I did to you in high school. I become a foster parent, then I adopt. 
No way! This is how Cuddy gets a child? Also, Tab said earlier that Cutner was the one being bullied in school and that's why he was getting so angry with the jock Simon who gave the patient the shrooms. But it seems Cutner wasn't seeking vengeance, but had feelings of guilt. Now he got older and felt horrible about what he had done to another person and needed to make peace with this person that he'd bullied in high school. It's interesting how the balance of power shifts as people go from school into adulthood. Someone definitely needs to run a sociology study on high school reunions. It's no wonder this is a Christmas episode because it wrapped itself up quite nicely. Cuddy got her baby, Cutner made peace with his demons and Foreman made things up to 13 by getting Janice back in the trial. This episode was good, but it only makes sense when you watch Cuddy's battle to adopt a child here.